Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to talk about 20 plus things that you can do to be in a constant state of readiness and prepared for whatever life is going to throw at you. Let's get to it. The following tips are intended to help support you in ensuring your personal safety and security throughout your everyday life. Most of these tips involve situational awareness and thinking proactively about your surroundings. The first tip is to always park backwards into a parking spot. This is going to allow for a much quicker departure in an emergent situation. When parking nose out, you have a more commanding field of view, which lends itself to a greater awareness of your immediate surroundings. The same principle should be with you when you're in a pedestrian mode. Always stick to the periphery and always have a wide field of view. So for example, if you're going to go to a restaurant, sit in a spot which is going to allow for maximum egress while allowing for the greatest field of view of the establishment's patrons. Ideally, you would sit next to a rear exit. That way, if a problem entered the establishment, you're not first in the line of fire. If you are a person who is trained and licensed to conceal carry, this will provide you the most tactical vantage point to counteract the threat. When attending a major sporting event or going to a place where there's a lot of people, you'll be tempted to park as close as possible to the entrance. Just remember, the closer you park to the entrance, the longer it's going to take you to exit the parking lot. If you have to evacuate a place quickly, parking further away near the exits is going to allow you to bypass the clustering taking place in the epicenter. When stopped at an intersection, don't be afraid to give yourself enough space to get out of that lane if necessary. Avoid the center lanes on major freeways. Try to stay to the right lane. If there is a gridlock or a traffic jam, this is going to afford you the most options. A person behind you may have a brake failure. They may be driving while distracted on their cell phones. It might be icy out. This is going to allow you just an extra little bit of insurance in case they can't or don't stop to avoid a collision. In addition, this will also give you more options in the case of a carjacking. Anytime you enter a building, always be aware of where the emergency exits are. If you're going to spend a lot of time in that building, do a once over of the fire escape plan just so you're familiar with the building layout and the different rooms and escape routes which may not be immediately apparent. In addition, always know where the fire alarms and the fire extinguishers are. Always have a means of defense within six foot reach, especially when you're in your home. Do whatever the law permits to give yourself a defensive edge. Always carry the following items on your person. A knife, a flashlight, a tactical pen, and a multi-tool. Obviously, the laws in the country that you live in will determine what you are able to carry as a means of self-defense. Maximize this to the fullest extent of the law. Always have the following emergency supplies in your vehicle. A glass breaking tool, which is in the immediate reach of the driver and all passengers. An air compressor, a jump starting battery pack, a fire extinguisher, a tow rope, a standard tool kit, a small amount of water and some non-perishable food, a wool blanket, a first aid kit, and a means of self-defense. If possible, include a bailout bag. Just in case you have to leave your vehicle, this may contain some of the aforementioned items. Always lock the doors, especially when at home. The only thing worse than a burglary is a home invasion. It's important to remind your family members, particularly the younger ones, to do this. And if you're in the backyard, always lock your front door. If it's winter time and you leave your home, always make sure that you have the appropriate apparel to survive a vehicle breakdown. Many people will get complacent and they'll use remote start to preheat their cars and they'll jump in their car in a flimsy windbreaker or a t-shirt, thinking that nothing bad can happen. If your vehicle breaks down, you're gonna freeze your butt off, especially if you're doing long commutes. Never wear sandals or flip-flops unless it's a sandal that lends itself to some light athletic activity. You put yourself at a major disadvantage and you become more of a target when you are dressed in vulnerable ways. This next one might seem obvious, but you should always know the weather forecast, especially when you're going on a wilderness outing. Know what the 7 to 14 day forecast is, that way if you do end up getting lost, at least then you'll have some awareness of what you need to do in terms of shelter preparation. No matter where you are in public, periodically scan the environment for suspicious people. This doesn't mean that you need to be in a constant state of paranoia. Most major incidents are going to occur in densely populated regions. People have a tendency to get very complacent when in crowds. If you are going to be texting and looking at media on your smartphone, make sure that every few seconds or at least every minute or so, you're scoping out your environment. Now it should be obvious to anybody that you should never be on your smartphone while driving. Distractive driving kills many people every year. But when you're walking in public on your smartphone, 
Act as though you are driving and you need to pay attention to the road. This means every few seconds you are breaking your focus on your smartphone and scanning the environment for threats. This will also prevent you from the embarrassment of walking into a sign. Never post too much information on social media in terms of your immediate whereabouts, as this may be putting your home at risk of burglary. Always ensure that there's at least half a tank of gas within your vehicle. You never know when you're going to need to get out of Dodge. Never buy property deep within the inner city. Always stick to the periphery. The main principle of situational awareness and preparedness is stick to the periphery and try to have as wide of a field of view as possible. In a macro sense, this means living on the outskirts of the city or in a small town or on the countryside. Avoid public transportation when and where possible, especially during peak flu season because if there ever is a viral outbreak, this is going to be how it spreads the fastest. Be very mindful when touching surfaces, particularly bathroom doors, just use your feet. Avoid putting yourself into large crowds when possible. Now this doesn't mean that you can't go out and you can't live your life and you can't let loose and enjoy things. This just means to avoid doing it unnecessarily. Walk around as if you are a predator and not prey. Not a literal predator in the modern colloquial sense of the word, but walk with intention, walk with purpose, be deliberate with your movements, walk with energy and vigor and act as if you have a destination to go to, even if you don't. Make yourself a hard target by looking aware, vital and energized. This next point may seem to contradict the last one, but it's important to blend in with your environment. Don't draw attention to yourself with overly unorthodox apparel. Be the person that blends in and that nobody is going to remember. This is going to mean different things for every different environment. For example, if you're going to a Halloween party, you may stand out more if you don't dress up in a costume. It boils down to being as close to the socio-cultural baseline as possible. Certain genetic and biological factors may make this more challenging. For example, if you are the tallest person in your community, perhaps you are a person of an ethnic minority within your community. If that's the case, it may require more effort on your part to equalize it in other ways. Now this is not to say that you can't express yourself uniquely and creatively. There are many other ways to do that and scratch that itch without drawing attention to yourself. Exercise every day and stay fit. Whether it's a martial art or self-defense, being physically fit is the number one way to ensure that you can get out of a bad situation quickly. Stay informed and watch the news. It's important to know what's going on in the world so you can anticipate any major threats. Think for yourself. Don't get caught up in the herd mentality thinking. Just because everybody else is doing something doesn't mean you have to follow. If you're in a public predicament, think outside the box. If you find yourself caught up in the herd mentality, stop for a second, assess the situation, and determine whether following the group is the only course of action and whether it's the most appropriate course of action. There may well be many alternatives that you're not considering because the adrenaline of the situation and the power of the crowd. Always keep your home well lit. There's nothing a criminal likes more than darkness, and always make sure you have a good line of sight to the street and to your neighbor's homes. Don't give them the benefit of darkness and concealment. Whenever you're leaving your home, even if you're only leaving for a few hours, never give the impression that you're leaving for an extended period of time. Don't be hauling all your luggage out the front door in broad daylight for everybody to see that you're going on a trip and that you're going away for a week. Be more discreet about your planning and intentions. Never let road rage get the best of you. Realize that when you're behind the wheel of a moving vehicle, it's a life or death situation. And on an unconscious level, you're aware of this. This is why when other drivers are offensive at your expense, that adrenaline will typically emerge as an aggressive response. Instead of trying to exact justice in the following moments, by doing something antagonistic to the person who cuts you off, let the universe do the work for you and live to fight another day. It's highly improbable that it was a personal attack against you, so don't take it as one. Last but not least is secrecy. Unfortunately, I routinely sacrifice my own security to make these videos for you as it requires me to be a public figure, but you have the option of remaining anonymous. So unless it's required or strategic to do so, don't talk about all your preparedness plans with your acquaintances. This doesn't mean you shouldn't discuss the general importance of emergency preparedness, as this will also have the benefit of reducing the stigma against preparedness if presented in a reasonable way. It just means that you shouldn't give up too much specific information about your own emergency preparedness resources and planning. I hope you found some of these tips useful today. Stay alert, always be ready. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out.
The best way to support this channel is by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com. We got high quality gear, and I mean high quality gear only. There are free shipping options, and my subscribers get an exclusive discount of 10% off. Use coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER in all caps, one word, at the checkout. Thanks for your support.